Hello, <laughs> everybody. Yeah, I'm Jen. I'm Marcia. And uh, we are Tea for All Reasons and Vintage for All Reasons. And so welcome. We're praying that we have clear sailing technology-wise. Yeah. Um, know that we've had issues in the past, but we're really hoping that tonight everything goes smoothly. But welcome. And... Um, We'll just get started. So tonight's going to be different because mom is, I don't know if you can see this laid out here, but mom is going to be doing flowers uh, for the tea table. And I will be doing a short demo on teas, floral theme teas. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some goodies to show you as well. But um, should we do that now? Or yeah. We can, okay. Just wait a minute. It's, yep. Something I was going to say is it's funny because how things evolve. I was telling um, Molly earlier today that uh, sometimes we don't even really have a clear picture of what we're going to do for the entire evening and it's kind of a process that we go through and especially for me my thinking and my creativity is kind of a process and so as I was setting up the table and then when Jen arrived with her things it just it, it was amazing how it just all, all kind of came, came together, together and definitely fits in with the floral theme and so we're excited to be able to show you and, and demonstrate for you a lot of beautiful floral um, themed things for the, the tea table. Yep. So we're, we're going to get to it because we're not exactly sure how long each piece yeah, is going to take. Um, you know, when we do a baking demo, we know how long it takes to prep and bake. Right. Uh, I know the tea, I know how long the teas are going to be, but not sure exactly how not long sure. the floral arranging and what mom is going to present, how that's going to go. But, um, so we're, we're not going to mess around with stuff. But there is a giveaway tonight, as always. We always have a giveaway. Um, and the key phrase for the giveaway is mug tea. All one word, mug tea. Because I'm giving away the, a magnolia mug. Um, it's got the beautiful magnolias. Um, it's Gracie, bone china. But it is dishwasher and microwave safe. Beautiful. Um, and it's it is really lovely. I mm -hmm. love the detail on the handle. Yeah. Um, and a one ounce bag of um, one of the teas that I'm going to demonstrate tonight, Bennett Sisters, which Beautish. is um, part of the Jane Austen collection. Um, so Bennett Sisters is one of the teas that I'm going to demonstrate and show you, um, and is part of the giveaway. So you get both the mug and the tea. Um, with the giveaway tonight and so I wanted to take care of that because mom's got a lot of stuff going yeah. on here and so I can move this out of the way um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else uh, oh any administrative we're gonna show some necessities yeah so administrative wise maybe um, like before after we take our break maybe yeah and then catch them up on some other things sure. that are coming um, yeah, we'll for sure toward the end let you know of the next um, Facebook Live that's coming next month and kind of where we're headed into the fall. Right. Um, we may take a break. It depends on how things go. If we feel like we need a break to reset or whatever, we'll take a five-minute break to do that. Um, I think we probably will. I think we'll probably need a break. Yeah, y'all probably need a break. Right. Um, and so... Um, so we'll, we'll address some of the other things later when I'm doing the tea demo. Yeah. Um, but for now, we're going to take it into the dining room and show you some, some of the, the necessities that we have. Right. So you, I'll follow you. Okay. And Miss Molly's here helping us today. She's on the, Hi. Um, at the computer. Doing, Molly's monitoring the comments and questions. So if you have any questions, chime in. Um, in the comments and she will get those to us and um, I did in the overview of the live put the links to my shop at tforallreasons.com and also mom shop at vintageforallreasons.etsy.com thank you um, so anything from mom is at the, her Etsy shop and anything from me is tforallreasons.com okay yep um, okay do you want yeah to, I'll yeah. go first uh, one of the things I wanted to, uh, it, it, we don't want this to be confusing to you all, especially what things are in Jen's shop and what things are in mine, but I can start off by telling you that all the table toppers uh, and runners are in my shop, 
and so I thought I would kind of show you those first and then we'll go and look at each of uh, the other items that are on top of the table toppers. But I wanted to be able to talk to you a little bit about the, the shape and the sizes and the pricing on those. Um, so to start with this one here, um, I've done this in a runner before, but this is a different weight fabric, and so this is a table topper, here, I'll move these. and it is um, a square. You'll see it in the shop, and I believe this one is a, uh, yeah, this one is a 44 by 44, I believe, 44 or 45 square. And um, so, and you'll see the pricing is pretty consistent in the shop. That the square is a certain size, the square is a certain price. If they're smaller in size, then they're going to be less price. And the runner is the same thing. Some are longer than others, so that's why the, the prices are a little bit different in the shop. Um, this one is a, a beautiful runner, and it's fully lined, and it's in the Christmas red. It could also be Valentine's or um, Fourth of July time frame, you know, Patriotic Month, but it's a beautiful um, red table runner. This is a topper that goes like in the center of your table, and this is a runner. Yeah. And then this is another runner, the black, and the same thing, fully lined, and it's a runner as opposed to a topper. All right, now this is a topper. This one, I have two of these, and this one is, um, I believe, 44 or 45 square. And it's a nice decorator fabric. It's got a nice weight to it. So there are two of those in the shop. And then this one is also a table topper around the same size, about 44 inches square. And it is also, well, it's not a thickness like a decorator fabric, but it has a wonderful feel to it and a sheen to it, almost almost close to a polished cotton. And this one is um, uh, also a square, so you see how it's used here on the table. As kind of a focal point for a long table, you can have a white tablecloth underneath and just use it, or even a pink one, and use it as the focal for your centerpieces. Okay, and then this one, and you'll see how we kind of coordinated colors and everything will come back to those. Um, this is the uh, Williamsburg runner. And this one is a larger size, larger in length and larger in width. It does a beautiful, uh, makes a beautiful statement for a Christmas table and it's lined in a beautiful green. All right, and then this blue, if you can see this one, the blue is also a table runner fully lined and I believe there are two in the shop of that one and then this is the newest um, table topper that I have and this one is a 36 by 36 so it's priced accordingly and this is a cotton and just a beautiful tea themed uh, table topper that would just be beautiful on your table to use with I love it because you can use so many different colors and you'll see the how it coordinates with so many things. So those are all the table runners and table toppers that are currently, well I won't say all that are in the shop, there's some others in the shop, but these are all the ones that that I pulled out to show you tonight. And then one more thing um, in this regard I'll show you before Jen talks about hers is uh, this was the project I was working on this week and it's a, um, a tea cozy that fits over a, about a two to a four cup pot and it's lined with a check fabric has a little button element on top and this is in the shop and this one I know is 32 so okay Jen you're on okay we'll start down here since you're already over here okay so I've shown these before um, this is a tea cozy um, and this is actually, I think, for a six cup, yep, six cup pot. So it looks a little bit big on this particular pot. This is a four cup pot that's inside the six cup tea cozy. But this is the wrap style cozy, and I've shown these before um, where you untie 
the ribbon, place your pot in, and then you can snug it up over your teapot. It has the open top so that you can access the lid. Um, and so that is the wrap style tea cozies. And um, I have others of them on the table down here um, in various fabrics. So uh, I think this one's called the Cherry Blossom. This one is also a six cup. Yep, six cup. Um, this one is, I think, all three of these. This is a six cup Love that and one. a really pretty, yeah. and it has the nice green um, check pattern, or yeah. it's kind of a plaid. It it's been. almost uh -huh. a plaid yeah. um, inside, really pretty. And this is a four cup. You can see the difference um, in the size. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Much smaller four cup in the nice pretty pink floral uh, pattern and then with the smaller floral inside. So these are the wrap kind and then this one is uh, th available as well um, in the shop. Yep. And then um, should I just do all the cozies? I would say. I'll just go I'll yeah, move just, down the table. Yeah, yeah. So this is a T for one in a rose chintz pattern I think and so the cup lays on top and I love the scalloped detail of yeah. the cup that and is so pretty. isn't that pretty yeah and then the the little teapot also has the scalloped foot and the beautifully ornate beautiful um, and the lid and so that's a tea for one available in the shop I just love how that looks yeah, displayed. Okay. It's so different. Usually the cup is beneath the pot, mm -hmm. but I love I love that different. Um, that it. pot's not for sale. That's my pot. Yeah, I'm just gonna move it out of the way. Okay, and then Mom stacked these teacups that are available in the shop. This one is a blue voile voile uh, toile toile. Yes, thank you. I was like voile. That does feel right. Um, it's Gracie China. Um, it is dishwasher, microwave safe, so it's great for everyday use, but it's also just really pretty, has a nice foot on that cup. Um, and then this one is from Steckall, butterfly motif on the cup and the saucer. And that comes wrapped like a set, so you could give that as a gift. And that's a nice big cup. It is. If you see the difference, right. this is a more traditional five ounce mm -hmm. This one probably, probably holds six. eight. Well, no, maybe it's, six it's, or seven. It's pretty big. Yeah. Um, but it definitely holds more than five right. ounces of tea. And then this really pretty one with the bluebird. I like that the saucer is a blue. Right. The mm -hmm. saucer itself is blue, right. but the cup, the is, cup white. is white. Yeah. Um, with the pretty roses and the bluebird, and then inside a nice rose motif inside. And I want to make an observation here. If you'll notice this table topper with all the different colors, I want to point out to you uh, folks that when you're setting a tea table, you don't have to have everything matching. Mm -hmm. You could have um, an eclectic look. You already got something busy going on here, but I'm looking at these three cups, and I'm thinking if you had a fourth, that would set a really pretty table, like if you had just a white plate underneath all of them as a unifier mm -hmm. for your table. But to have a different cup at each yeah, each person each gets the person, wrong cup. and it just ties all the colors mm -hmm. from the table topper yep, in. It I really just, does. And look at the teapot. I know, with that and the too. teapot. Yeah, I've shown this before. The dogwood teapot. I love it with the little bird. I'm gonna turn it around. I love the dogwood teapot mm -hmm. with the little um, bluebird on the lid. These would go. I know. If you're looking for a, a, something new, you know, the yeah. table topper and the teapot and four cups and saucers, yeah. I, you've, got, that would go. you've got tea all there mm -hmm. already. Yep. So the, that's those teacups. And then I've got this set of mugs from um, Victorian, Albert. Vic, yeah, Victorian Albert Museum in London. Two mugs, they're beautiful, uh, china, um, and a nice floral motif and the green accent. Very pretty. And they come as a set in the box. All right, then they're available, all of the china that I'm showing you is available at tforallreasons.com. Right. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Then um, and then so this is the other kind of cozy that I sell. You've seen before the like the one mom made. I don't make them. Um, this is the four cup. Pretty sure because that's the sixty eight. Um, four cup, and then you can see here's the 68 cup, mm -hmm. the significant size difference. But these are great. They're padded and lined, um, and they just fit right over your teapot. And we had set these things together because we thought they just coordinated so beautifully. Again, you know, if you're setting up a tea table with the runner and the cozy and these two beaded infusers yeah I was gonna oh, show yeah love so the these color. these are made by me it's these are one cup tea infusers and I add a beaded extension with a charm at the end so this one is a nice spring green glass bead and then pressed um, flowers inside glass yeah. you can see that and then this one is a sh uh, this is actually a chandelier crystal and a nice spring green with a coordinating green glass bead to connect. Um, Very nice. And, and they go pretty, They really go well. Pretty yeah. nicely with the tea cozy. Right. And I can convert these to a pot size infuser if you want a pot I default to the one cup. Mm -hmm. But I can, um, I can move the extender to a pot size. It will increase the price. But if you want me to do that, just shoot me a message and um, I can let you know what That's the great. additional price will be to do that. Um, yeah, and yeah. then that turquoise yep. one there, and look at how pretty that would be mm -hmm. with that. Yep. Look at that. Yeah. Um, again, another chandelier crystal mm -hmm. um, yeah. with a glass bead that coordinates to connect. And then I'll show this one since we're on the tea infuser. Uh, another style of um, chandelier crystal. I really love the Baroque mm -hmm. shape of that and the bright blue color. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes really nicely with this topper. And then um, if you've been with us for a while, you've seen the tea wallets. These are great for carrying your tea bags. Um, it's got six slots where you could fit tea, tea bags or tea sacks. Snap it up. Put it in your purse or your backpack or your luggage or whatever pocket, mm -hmm. um, and ready then you've go. got your tea with you, ready to go. And I, these are in the shop at Tea for All Reasons. And then we'll come up here. So um, I have this set of four floral teacups and saucers. Here, these are two of them. These are by Gracie China. Um, they are dishwasher safe, but not microwave safe because of the gold on the rim. Um, and so these are two of them, and then the other two are, are at the other end of the table. I have these in the Tea for All Reasons shop listed individually, so you can get one. Like if you if you find one is your favorite, you can buy the one, or I sell them as the set. I'm pretty sure I have it to where. Um, you can buy them as the set of four as well. Um, a set of, so you, the set of four would be the four different The four, ones. yes. Okay. Yeah, the four different ones. I don't have four of right. each. I have the one set of the four. So you can buy one. If, you, if someone buys one, then the set is no longer available. Right. Um, but if somebody wants all four, um, then you can buy them as a set. So these are the other two. Um, a really pretty blue floral and then the pansies. Um, and so these two with those other two are available at Tea for All Reasons. And then I'll show these real quick. We'll do a blast by these. Uh, more of the beaded tea infusers that I make. Um, this pretty butterfly. Um, I think I have one of these at Tea for All Reasons as well. This one has the the um, the tag from my Etsy shop, but I'm pretty sure I have one of these listed at T for All Reasons as well. And then blue floral, another, this is a very smooth chandelier crystal. Um, this is uh, crackled enamel um, and got a bit of a glare on there, so I will, there you go, in a teal blue color. Um, this is a dandelion fluff. It's kind of hard to see. 
There you go, maybe you can see that. Dandelion fluff pressed in glass, and then a crystal clear, and it's kind of iridescent um, chandelier crystal. And those are available at t4allreasons.com. We're almost done. Um, and then she had, Mom had set up this pink coordinating yeah, motif. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to these. Yeah, she's coming done. back to those. Um, this beautiful teacup, also by Stekal. It's about the same size as that butterfly one. Um, I'm pretty sure this is seven or eight ounce cup. Yeah. It's pretty big. Maybe seven, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's wrapped as a set as well. And it's, um, I think it's peonies? Uh, or a poppy? Uh, that's hard. Oh, it's, you know what? It looks like one of the flowers on the counter. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, um, but anyway, it's beautiful. Not freesia. It's not freesia. I'm pretty sure it's... Well, I'm not sure. It's hard okay. to tell. It's right. very... Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But um, pink, the saucer is pink, and you can tell if you look really closely that the, um, the cup is also pink on the outside but white on the inside. Very so pretty. And then two additional tea wallets available, the, the two pink florals um, that are available in the shop. And um, similar to the black, red that mom has in her runners and her um, table toppers, the Paris Bistro motif, but in pink. And it's got fun gray polka dots on the inside. Yeah, and I thought it was really pretty coordinated with the with the pink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is really pretty. And the cup. And the cup. Yep. yep, perfect. And then I do have the black. Um, this may be the last one that I have, actually. Um, was this the only one in the box? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the last one that I have um, with the gray, I mean, uh, the black and white polka dot on the inside. Um, this is a four cup, two to four cup. Yeah, it goes um, with the runner. Yeah, oh, I need with to. With either one, actually. Yeah, one. with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep, and even the red. Yeah. Yep, right. It would be pretty. And then two more of the tea wallets in um, yellowish floral stripe, stripey, if you're into those colors. And so that's what we've got. Okay. Oh, I think mom's going to Yeah, I'm going to tell you, we're kind of finishing up with the, the centerpiece. Um, <clears throat> as we get into the floral arranging, I'm going to explain a, uh, a little bit about the the options that you have as far as containers are concerned. And this is just one. I'm not going to use this tonight to do an arrangement, but I just want to explain it to you. This is a three tier, and the great thing about this is that you can use each section singly. So, for instance, you could do an arrangement here in the center, or you could even put a little pot there, and then these holes are intended for individual stems of flowers, like. I, uh, you know, the small um, uh, irises or something with a very small stem. It's a very constructed type of arrangement. Or you can put the next level on and do a repeat of the bottom, put it here, and then, like, or you, and then put, you know, a little pot or another arrangement here. Or you can do all three layers with the same flowers or contrasting flowers and just a little something different in the center. And so this is just a very creative way of doing a very constructed um, set type of arrangement for a centerpiece. And this set is in the Etsy shop and it's $20 for all three pieces. And then <clears throat> these are topiaries and this is um, silk, these are silk flowers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, each one is ten, uh, twelve dollars in the Etsy shop, but they're just beautiful and perfect for, like a bridal shower or um, a baby shower or a birthday, a special birthday, something like that. And so they are sold. Um, I think they may be listed separately, but I think it would be better if they were purchased together, so you have both of them on a the table. Okay, and that's. That's all we have on the table tonight. Yep. Okay, so we're going to move back into the kitchen. Awkward transition. <laughs> We've got to figure out our transition. That's okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to let you take it away. Yeah. So Mom's going to do floral arranging, 
And uh, see, that was the one I was mm, wondering yeah. if that was on the teacup. Maybe okay. I think it's actually peony, or I yeah. have to look it up. Okay, anyway. all right. Anyway, take it away. Okay. All right. Um, well, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and just really hadn't figured out how to make it work in um, a workshop type setting or or what have you, but then I figured that this was really going to be uh, a good way to instruct on how to do a table arrangement for a, the tea table. Now, you may wonder how I learned how to do this. Well, it is kind of a, an interesting story because it does go back to the years that we lived in England. And I was very young. I think when we got there, I might have been 26, something like that and uh, maybe 25, and we lived on a base, uh, a military base, but it was a very small base, and we lived in, in a, on a square. Well, off of the square was, uh, and this was an officer's uh, section, and nearby was um, a couple who, uh, and the wife was a floral arranger and she had designed her entire garden to be able to use those flowers to do arrangements for the officers club and for the church. And so, but she decided when a group of American wives came in, I guess the British wives were not interested in doing this, but she saw this fresh crop of American wives come in and she said, if I teach them what I know, that I'm going to have helpers to take over some of the workload. And, and there was quite a workload because at that time, uh, Princess Anne was coming for a royal visit and it was a big deal and a lot of flowers, a lot of arrangements needed to be made. So she taught us how to do table arrangements. That led to teaching us how to do those large arrangements that you see in English churches, the big ones that are on stands. Yeah, I learned how to do that as well. I wish I, I have a picture somewhere, but anyway, so um, this is how I learned from Marie. Marie was her name. And so what she taught us first was that you always measure your container. Now you think about the occasion, you think about the table that you're going to use and you think about the other elements like the tablecloth and the table toppers and what china you're going to use. That determines what colors you're going to pick up with the flowers and then it determines what container you're going to use. What Basically uh, the, the container has to be the right size for the table. So for instance, let's say this square that I've set up here on the counter is the size of a table. And let's say you're going to have maybe four people, although this would be large enough to have two people, one on each end, and two people. So it would be set for six. This is a good size container for this size of table because it leaves you plenty of room for your china, your silver, and you're serving your triple tiers or whatever it is that you're serving your tea on. So if you get kind of the visual perspective of a table for a square table for six, this is a good size container. Also, it could be round. You don't have to have a uh, round container um, just for a round table. A round container is good for a square or a rectangle, um, as is a, a rectangle is, is good for a round table. Actually, I, I think I prefer a round container on a round table, but, you know, not everybody has a variety of containers they can use. But in this case, this is a good container for this size surface, okay? Now, the next thing is she taught us how to determine how big the arrangement is going to be. Now one of the first rules of your tea table is that, or even a dining table, is that you want to make sure your arrangement is not so high that the people can't see above it to see the other's faces. 
And so that's one of the determining factors on the size of the container. And we're going to see it's going to work with this. I noticed the other day, I was looking through some pictures that I took when we were in England, and it was of um, the Osborne House on the Isle of Wight. And we were shown a dining room that was set beautifully for a very large dinner. Well, I, I, I kind of took this in because all of the arrangements were very high. And you probably noticed that like on Downton Abbey and other big uh, dinners that the royals have, that the arrangements are really high. Well, the reason is because they're not expected to talk to the people across the table at all. They don't need to see the people across the table. They only need to see the person to their left and to their right. So part of the etiquette of that type of a setting for dinner is that there's a, and, and um, this has happened on Downton Abbey, where they turn to the left and they'll talk to this person, but then there's a set time that everybody changes position and then begins to talk to the person on their right. And so <laughs> that way nobody's feeling slighted. Anyway, I digress. You don't want to worry in you know looking at shows like that that the arrangements are so tall but you don't want your arrangement to be so tall you can't look and converse with those other people so the rule of thumb is that you measure the container to see how wide it is now with the handles on this one I need to include the handles so the width is 11 inches and then the height is 3 inches so my total is 14 inches that means that the height of my arrangement, and this is a 12 inch ruler, should not be higher than 14 inches. So let's go. So my first stem, and I'm not, I'm not actually gonna put this in, but I'm just showing you that my first stem is not gonna be, let's see, even that's too tall. So my first stem is going to be about like that because this is raised up a little bit. So you're going to be able to see, sitting down, you're going to be able to see. And of course, this is going to be in the center, so the people are going to be there anyway. So that's, a, that's about the size of, and it's all about proportion. Now, likewise, when I get ready to do um, the size, which we're actually going to start with covering this, um, likewise, the sides need to be the same. So the point from the center to this end would be, um, well, no, the total, is that right? Yeah, th that's right. So it'd be no more than 14 inches there. I probably would bring it to like there. But once we get the center part in there, we'll know. Okay. Can you explain what that green stuff is? Yes. So. The green stuff. This is called Oasis, or I think they call it um, also floral foam, and it's um, uh, different from the other um, uh, blocks that are used for silk flowers that are not um, dampened ahead of time. These have been soaking in water all afternoon, so they're full of water and they're very heavy and so they weigh the, uh, the bowl down, which is a good thing. It doesn't mean you're not gonna water the plant or the flowers during the week. You are, but this really gives them a good, um, a good set and also gives it weight so it's not gonna float or move around. Okay, very good. All right, so now the first... Where do you get it? I got it at Hobby Lobby. You can get it at Michael's. Um, you can get it at a florist. Yeah, any craft store. Any craft store, yeah. And they have different quantities. I, I just bought the one, but you can buy them in larger quantities. Okay, now the other thing that, um, that I want to uh, emphasize to you is that you don't want to start 
arranging with the flowers. You want to start with the greenery. And it, it's just a practical issue. You want to get you want to get this covered. That's the main thing. And and then as far as greenery, well, where do I get the greenery? Um, when we moved in this house, I took a look at all the plants that are already there, the landscaping, and I said I need something planted that's going to give me some greenery for flower arranging. So this is all from the same bush, and I love it because of the variety. There's a solid green, there's a little bit of yellow in these, and then this is a real uh, variegated um, uh, section. And I hardly touched what's out there, but this gives you a nice variety. And in this case, with this color scheme, I would not use a lot of that. I'm going to use a little bit interspersed, but what I'm going to do first is cover this so that we don't have to go back and worry about, you know, spaces uh, that are left undone. So the first thing you do, and you're not looking for height at this point. What is it? It's a kuba. It's called a kuba. And so as I said, you're not looking for height at this point. You're really looking to just cover, to cover the base. And I'm not going to talk through all of this. So I'm just going to let you watch me. What's the tool? The tool, these are just called floral clippers or I think Martha Stewart calls them secretors. I never call them secretors. <laughs> They're clippers. Okay. And the other thing is, after you um, clip your greenery from outside, what I did was I brought it in and um, put it in the sink and ran water over all of it so I could get any little bugs off of it and also to get it really nice and moist. And, um, and then when you clip, whether it's your greenery or your uh, flowers, you want to cut at an angle. You always want to cut it. You don't want to leave, you know, even if it's the right length, like this one, this is a good length, I would still cut a little bit off of the end. And that just uh, keeps it fresher. All right, I've got to pay attention to what I'm doing here. All right. this one anybody have any questions no questions no questions all right I guess I'm doing okay huh I'm not to show how to make it cut Oh, I thought they could see how he's, how he's making a no, cut. He, your, uh, your floral arrangement is blocking the camera a little bit. Okay. All right. And then I am, at some point, you need to turn it around to see how you're doing. You don't want to ignore. Now, another thing... Um, if you're doing, um, let's say you're doing a buffet, um, which would allow you to do a much higher arrangement because it would be up against a wall or against a window and your buffet would all be set there and no one's going to see the back of your arrangement. In that case, you want the back to be taller. So the, in this case, the 14 inches would be in the back, not in the center. I cut enough. And as I said, we're just doing some filling in to cover this so that we don't have to go back later and do it. And you know, um, there are some times when I will put them in, not necessarily these, but I'll put some greenery in and I wind up 
doing some major adjustments as I get towards the end. So. And that's okay. All right, so let's see how we're doing. Another thing is you want to make sure you don't have the big knobbly bits um, to go into your oasis because they're going to just take up more room and you want to, um, you've got to save some room for your flowers and not thick, thick pieces here. Nope. I just... Alright, and I've got to make sure, as I said, I've got to make sure I've got plenty of room there for flowers. Alright, so I think I'm going to go ahead and start with the flowers because um, I can always come back on the edges here and do more. Okay. Now, the, um, the other rule here is when you're getting your very center piece, which is going to be the 14 inches, you want it to be the smallest in diameter because you don't want, you don't want like a big piece like that at the very top. You actually want the big piece down here as a focal point. So, I I've, I've had bought two bunches of, um, two cellophane bunches of flowers to make sure that there were two focal pieces because those focal pieces, one's going to go on that side and one's going to go on this side. And especially since, you, since I'm working to do a table that's round or square, there are going to be people on both sides, so I want to make sure that everybody has the right, the right view on both sides. So, that's too big for your center. So what I would probably do, I don't really want to use those because those are going to be nice taken off and just like feathery bits around, just little, little elements that go in at the last minute. So I'm going to save those. I don't want to put the roses in because again, those are more focal. And what I have left this is kind of an odd addition to just one of the arrangements. So I don't have two of those. So what I'm going to have to do is do one on one side and another on the pink one on the other side, which is going to be fine because they're not going to know that they've got something different on that side. But they're kind of like kind of flowers. So you have to think about that. You know, how am I going to make this work? So, but those are not going to go on the top. So, that kind of leaves these. And this was one of the original ones, I think, that I had pulled out. Um, is that right? Or I thought... Yeah, you had one. No, I had this one. Yeah. I had this one. Okay. So, this was the one, I think, that I had pulled out. And so, I think that this Stop will... Stop waving it around. Well, I'm looking at it. I think it will work. It's not the best. It would be better if it were just a single, but I think it's going to work. Because um, that has too many. Yeah. Oh, you know what I could do? Here's what I could do. No, those are gathered together too. Oh, there's the other one. Okay. Yeah, it's not the ideal. Well, see, but you're working with what you've got, right? So I think we will go back to this one and use this one in the center. It doesn't have to be a single point, and that's, that's what I want to stress with you. You have to be flexible with arrangements like this. Now the other thing is, you start to do your arrangement, you want to take off any leaves, especially for something like a, um, 
a daisy or a chrysanthemum, those leaves are ugly. You want to take those off and they wilt really quickly. These might as well, so I'm going to take off most of those because we've got other greenery here and I'm going to add some other things that are going to kind of cover that up. So, again, let's make sure that we're getting the right, the right height on that one. And I think let's measure here. Yeah, I'm gonna take a little more off. Okay, so that's your center piece. And then from there, what you're gonna do is work on these focal pieces first because you, you do your large florals first and then you move down to the smaller florals last. So we're going to take those, those leaves off, all of the leaves off of these. And remember, you've got lots of greenery, so you're not going to have to worry about the greenery that's on here. So um, let me turn this around because I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the focal on this side and show you. Okay, it's gonna be like that. And then you're gonna do the next one. Remember, we said at the beginning, we didn't know how long this was gonna take. Because usually I just kind of whip through it and do it, but I'm really thinking through because I want to explain to you everything and make sure that it makes sense to you. So now this one is going to go in. And if you look at it from this point of view, they're going to be the same height. Okay? Now from there, you want to see what else you've got to work with. I think probably what we want to do is work with these first. We've got two carnations and we have two roses and then we have these. So we have to figure out, so this, this is your main focal here. What we're going to do is put one of the roses here and the other one on the other side and the same thing with the carnation. The carnation is going to go on this side and the other one on this side. Do all of these steps apply to silk flowers as well? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. The only thing you don't have to worry about is taking the leaves off or cutting. I'll take that back. You will wind up cutting with wire cutters. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a pain. It is a pain. Um, sometimes I'm lazy and I'll just bend them, but it's better to cut them. All right, I want to make sure that I get the right length here. Okay. Now this one, you don't necessarily want to be the same height as the white one. The white one is, again, kind of your set focal point. I'm going to take all these leaves off. Unfortunately, these roses, you have to be really careful. They don't have any um, horns. So we're good on that. Okay, so there's that one. So you see it's a little bit higher. So what we're working on is bringing the height up close to this, and then eventually we're going to work lower to get all the low part done as well. Okay, so there's that one. So see, they're the same height. All right, let's do the same thing with the carnation. Now this one can be tricky because it has a real thick stem and depending on the placement of it, whether to cut above it or below it. So we're going to have to be careful in how we cut. So it is going to go above. And we're going to test and see if this works. And this, this is going to be about the same height as the rose. And 
The other thing to um, note, take note here is that the pinks are different. There's definitely a difference between the pink carnation and the pink of the roses, but that's okay. In my mind, that just adds interest. There's also a big difference between the pinks here. So this is going to be a real variety of pinks. So you can see those four are pretty much the same, uh, the same height. Okay. Now, let's see what we do next. Um, I'm thinking that these two, because they're so nice and full, are going to be great on either end because you don't want them too close to this big focal point chrysanthemum. So we're going to get them situated on the ends. Daisy. Is it a daisy? Yeah, I guess it is. So you've got, you're going to have the whites, but not all the whites on one side. So I think it's going to look good. All right. We'll see how this goes. I think that's too much. And that's going to fill in nicely the area. You know, something else that I learned after my mother passed away, my dad was telling me, and I don't know what how it came up in the conversation, but he said, you know, your mom um, learned how to do flower arranging. And I said, well, I, I knew she would do flowers, but I didn't know how she learned how to do it. And he said, well, and my mom was a, a great seamstress. And so when we lived in Japan, my dad was um, in the army, and we lived in Japan, and we had a, um, a housekeeper, a Japanese housekeeper. Now this was, this would have been like 1950, 51, so it wasn't that long after the war. And there were, the Japanese people were really struggling to make a living, so we had a housekeeper. She taught my mom how to do ikibana, flower arranging, and my mother taught her how to sew. Um, and I just thought that was so interesting because I remember growing up seeing the Ikebana flower arrangements in the house and that's a whole different type of flower arranging which I kind of learned how to do as well. Um, some of what Marie taught us was um, loosely based on Ikebana but um, yeah so I guess I kind of come by it naturally um, somewhat. All right. So we got the white ones in, and now let's see what we what have we got to work with. We have these pinks. I think I'm going to put these pinks lower. You think? Oh, and another thing I want to say is you don't necessarily use all the flowers, um, but we're going to try to use all of them. All right, so I'm going to put these a little bit lower. I've got two of those. Okay. Put those down near the, the daisy. Well, it should be the other side. Hmm? Underneath the carnation. Oh, you're right. That side, this side. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And we're we're gonna put some white in to kind of contrast with all that pink. So no worries on that. Okay. Now I think we need some more pink up here. So maybe we'll do do some of these. Also need to get some down low here. Maybe I'll do that first. So near the um, near the daisy, we're going to get some. 
Would Lazy Susan help you spin the pot around? <laughs> I do have a Lazy Susan, actually, but no, it's all right. I was going to offer it to you, but I think you have one already, don't you? A Lazy, lazy Susan? Susan? Yeah, we have one. Uh -huh. Because we don't have a round table anymore. All right, so I have four of those, so I'm going to do that on both sides. But yeah, that's a good idea, um, hubby, because it's like um, when people do cake decorating, yeah. they use a lazy susan. Well, it's a different thing. But yeah, but basically. Same idea. Yeah. Okay, so there's that that side, and we'll do the same on this side. So how is it looking? Looks pretty good to me. going to take all the greenery off of this one, just kind of the, the wilted ones. Okay. All right. Now, all we have left is white and pink. So, I think what we're going to do, I think we need some pink right here, this lighter pink down here, and also it's fuller. We're going to have to use this one. It's not ideal. Alright, so what I'm going to have to do, I have to be drastic here. I had to cut the stem off at the bottom and kind of gather those little stems together. Okay, now this is a good time to start rotating it and just see if everything is even. It's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, so we're we're doing good. Okay. So let me get back to the right there. Okay. So now what we have left is this and the whites. So I want to make sure that if I'm if I'm looking down, that I don't have any any spaces, and I think we're doing pretty well. Question. Yeah. Will the green foam stain the china? Yes. Oh, you mean the foam, the floral foam. While the flowers are in there. Will it stain the china? Oh, stain. Stain. No. It will not. Now, if it's if the china is crazed, you might have an issue, but um, no, you should it shouldn't be. And um, I was, this was not actually what I was going to use. I was looking for something else and I couldn't find it, so I just kind of went searching through my house to see what all I had, and that was what I came up with. So. Um, Yeah, I know. That's not going to be even. Yeah, there we go. On that side. No, other side. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah, I know. But the way I'm looking at it, I think that's, that's what I have to do. Okay, 
So now let's look at the um, at the white ones, and these are not great because they're all on very small stems. I could take that off, but that would not do me any good. So I think what we're going to have to do is um, kind of stick it down in there. I will take that one out because I did that. I don't want to move that. So again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect on, you know, uh, identical on both sides. Now that's a little bit longer one. I think that's going to be going to be useful. So we'll save that one out, and we might even save that one. Oh, absolutely. You can. Um, I mean, you can use just about, and I'm going to talk a little bit about containers over here, but you can use just about anything as a container as long as it's the right proportion to the table that you're, that you're decorating. Um, that's, that's the most important thing. And uh, not all containers require Oasis. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit, too. All right, so I moved that one down a little bit. All right. I like this other side better, actually. All right, so now let's finish up with what we've got left. You know, there was one time um, I had a really fun project and um, we were honoring our pastor's wife and we had a theme and part of it was flowers and we asked everyone who was coming to the celebration to bring their favorite stem of flowers and we asked for two to three. So for instance, if daisies were their favorite flower, they brought three daisies. And then, <laughs> Then they gave them to me, and I had a vase, and they said, now make an arrangement out of all these flowers. Oh, my word. But it was the most fun, because while they were talking, they, they had a speaker, and so while the speaker was talking, and they were honoring our friend, I stood in the back and did this arrangement, which was going to be a gift to the honoree. But that was the most challenging, but the most fun because um, it was so eclectic and it turned out to be beautiful because it was all different colors and it was an example of, uh, it, it was like a floral tapestry of everyone there and all the different personalities, all the different gifts because they each had their favorite flower that they brought that spoke to them, you know, and wanted to share with her. So it was a wonderful experience to do that. I've always wanted to do it again, just, you know, just for fun. I think it would be great. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is bring some flowers down to the bottom. We need some white to the bottom. And, um, you don't want to push them in very far, and I'm going to put these together and do the same thing that I did with that other bunch. Bring them together. I'll be able to do the same thing with that other bunch. Okay, and you'll see what I did. I'm going to do the same thing. 
And then what I'm going to do is when we get all the flowers in, I'm going to start working on adding some more greenery. And I'm going to use some of that variegated because I think it's going to add some interest. Even though it's just got a little bit of yellow, I think it's going to really add some interest. Okay, how are we doing on time, Jen? It's five after eight. Okay, we're almost done. Maybe what we'll do when we come back is I'll talk about the different mm -hmm. sizes of vases and stuff. All right, so this is going to go just like we did with the other down low. You want the light contrast down there, and then we're going to use these. Push them together. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And then we'll put these down here. I just threw trash in the trash. The trash can's not in the trash. Oh, right. Okay, so now let me look at it. You're kind of doing your tweaking at this point. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, so now just to finish up a little bit, we're going to add some greenery down at the bottom. You want to make sure that all of the oasis is um, not visible. That variegated kind of sets it off a little bit. Do you add baby's breath anywhere you want it when it's done? Um, you can. Um, I think, to me, baby's breath is almost like a cliche. Um, I like to do, um, you know, my own greenery, but baby's breath, I think, is perfect with roses because it's, it's got that romantic feel to it. It's very delicate and romantic. I think it just depends on uh, the flowers that you're using. Certainly you can use it, but um, what I like doing with baby's breath is actually an arrangement of just baby's breath. I've done that for baby uh, showers before, baby's breath, baby showers, and it's very effective used in that, in that way. Um, but I would say if you're doing a uh, an arrangement of roses or even like a single rose with baby's breath. It's, it's quite lovely. It really is. I need to get that one in a little more. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to do. I think you need one right here. Yeah, I do. And one right here, too. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, someone else asked if there's going to be a tea demo tonight. Yes. Yes, always. So once she's done with this arrangement, we're going to take like a five minute break and then we'll come back and she'll show you other containers that you can use for flowers and then we'll do the tea demo. Yeah. All right. Just one more thing I want to do to show you and I don't want to take a lot of time. That's very pretty. But um, just add a little bit more for interest up at the top. It's going to make it really full, but I think the addition of the color up there um, just makes it more interesting. Yeah. 
And see, Jen pointed out the hole. She saw it. All right. How are we doing? Right here. Do I have a hole? Yeah. Okay. Actually, I don't know. Yeah. Right, right there. Yeah. Right here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I saw another one. It's looking good. I like the yellow. That little bit of yellow? Yeah. yeah. Rather than bring in yellow flowers, you just bring in a little bit of... Okay, folks, I think that's it. Beautiful. Does that do it? I think so. All right. It looks great. You can see it from all... You want to go around and see it from all angles? Too. It's beautiful. Thank you. So, um, to let you know, I'm going to be totally transparent here. I spent $30 for all of these flowers, uh, not including the oasis, but the um, uh, there were two bunches with the flowers and then one bunch with all of these. That actually could go down a little bit. It's a little too tall. Um, but that was that entire thing is for thirty dollars, and I don't think you could buy that. Not not a finished arrangement. Not a finished arrangement for that price. No. So not, not with live. Okay. And then the greenery was free. And the greenery was free. The Out container the was free. Yes. And let me also say to you that the oasis is reusable. All you do if if you don't have too many holes in it. Uh, yeah, that's. I'll fix that is um, flip it over and um, and use it again. And and honestly, I use Oasis until it's practically falling Come apart on. before I get rid of it. So, yeah, I'll fix that part yeah. later. Okay, yeah, all right. it's great. Okay, all right, so we're gonna take a five minute break um, and we'll reset here a little bit and I'll get the tea stuff ready. And then when we come back, like I said, Mom will talk about containers, other, other containers for flowers. And I'll do a tea demo, and then we're done for the night. Okay. Thank yeah. you, guys. I mean, we'll, we'll go over yeah, coming events. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, we're going to set this up. Look, I'm going to put this yeah. off to the side, and we'll put that there, maybe. Does, does that work? Yep. Turn on the music. And we'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back. We're back. We're back. Okay, I gotta make sure that music's not gonna play again. Hold on. Close the app. Okay. I can just see it start playing in my pocket. All right. So, okay. Yeah. So you go. We've, yeah, we've all we've cleaned up, and um, here's our beautiful arrangement. So pretty. And um, how many of you are now gonna pay way more attention to the flower arrangements on your tables? In restaurants and wherever than you ever have before. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know how to do it. I, yeah. And you've got the video, you can go back mm -hmm, and. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I wanted to just touch on the fact that we don't all use um, this type of container. We don't always have these a variety of flowers. Sometimes we have just something really simple. Um, one of the things that. Um, and I, I wish I had time to do this tonight because this, this is a really helpful suggestion for you all. You know, I said this to Jen, how often does someone come to your house when you've invited them for dinner or something and they bring you one of those cello um, packs of, of flowers and you're kind of on the spot because you don't know whether, well, I'll just, I'll just put them in a you know, pitcher of water for now and I'll worry about them later or do I do something with them now? And it, it does kind of put you on the spot, but using kind of these as an example, but also something very simple as a small um, arrangement like that, you can do something really nice uh, really quickly. And one container that's great is any kind of a pitcher. And um, you don't necessarily need greenery, but if you've got greenery handy, um, you can add a little bit of greenery to a, a pitcher like this and then just start cutting and adding the um, flowers that you have. And just remember the same, kind of the same rule of measurement, the height and the width is how tall you want the arrangement. And those usually come pretty tall. They are tall. The flowers are tall. So, um, but it would be rather small. But you can do something simple in a pitcher like this, and it won't take you any time at all. It wouldn't necessarily go on your table because one would think that you've already done your centerpiece, whatever it is. But um, you know, it's it's lovely to be able to show the guest that you've done something with them, but you don't have to. You shouldn't feel like you're under the pressure to to do that. Just save them for later and then you can put them, then you can take a picture and send them the picture of what you did. Um, so that's one suggestion. This is a, a great container for so many different kinds of flowers. They don't necessarily have to have pink in them. And um, this is in the Etsy shop and I think it's $8. So that's a great container to use right there. And then this one, um, this is a gem actually. And all these years, I've never used it, which is really sad, and that's why I'm selling it. It's in the shop. This is ribbon glass, hand-blown from Naples, Italy. And I got it from my mom. Um, I was kind of a prissy girl. I've always been. Um, but we went to Naples when I was 11. And um, I, th I think I may have picked this out because it was pink to go in my bedroom. And, um, but this kind of a container is great for just a little bouquet because this is uh, probably about five inches high and four inches across. So nine inches, it's only gonna be up to about here, about here. So just a small arrangement. So it's almost as if these would be maybe a little bit large, but these would be too large, but these would be pretty good to use as greenery to go in there. And then you could do, um, I mean, this would be cute for carnations or, um, what is it, the um, the smaller roses. What, tea roses, I think they're called. Primrose? No, not primroses. I think they're the tea roses. Mm -hmm. But carnations or roses or even um, freesias or, um, what did I want to call these? I forget now. Anyway, just something delicate like that and just a little bit of greenery is all you need in a vase like this. So, just as a kind of a base for the flowers you're gonna put in there. And this is in the Etsy shop and it's $30. 
And then this one is um, called Centennial, and it's by Lennox. And you'll notice that it's got a large uh, base to it, but a very small opening. So obviously you're not going to use it for a lot of flowers. And so you're probably only going to want to do something like that and maybe a grouping of three roses, something like that, or maybe a grouping of five carnations is about all that's going to fit in there. But the flowers are on the front, so, yeah. Yeah, kind of, oh, they're front and back, okay. But what I would do is just something really simple in a vase like this. I think it would be beautiful, um, just, just like that with some flowers. And this is in the Etsy shop, and I think this one is 19. You can check. But it's beautiful. It's Lennox, and it's called Centennial. All right, and then this one is Mikasa, and this one is called Remembrance. This one is designed to be uh, probably for a small bouquet of, like, carnations or... Um, it could be roses, but you're not going to fit a lot of roses in it because the base inside is not very big. So maybe five roses, something like that would be pretty. Odd numbers, that's another thing you want to remember, odd numbers. Now we used even numbers on this, but it was a large arrangement. But when you're doing an arrangement in a vase like this or uh, these, you want odd numbers. So five or seven. This one would probably be five. How tall is that? This one is nine, nine inches tall. So, um, too short. So obviously we need a longer stem. So something, a longer stem. And so probably long stem roses would be good in this. Oh, excuse me. Because you're looking for them to be like this tall, probably. So long stem roses in this would be beautiful. And um, this one, I think, is 17 in the Etsy shop. And then these two beauties are from Lennox. This one, well, let me go through this one first. This is very similar in the opening to this one, but it's shorter. So not necessarily long stem roses. You could cut them, which is kind of a sacrilege in a way. Mm -hmm but you don't want anything really tall because then it's going to be top heavy. If you have tall roses, it's going to be top heavy. Peonies would work in that. Peonies would work in that, like three. Mm -hmm. Three peonies. And, um, and just a little bit of greenery in there. And that would be beautiful. And I think this one is 19. I'm pretty, pretty sure it's 19 in the shop. And then lastly, this is your typical classic bud vase. This is for a single rose. This would be great to have just a little bit of greenery. These might be a little too, uh, too much, but a little bit of greenery, maybe one more, because we like the odd numbers. And your, your single rose, your long stem rose, because this is very tall. So this is gonna be displayed in a place that can handle something that tall, long stem rose, and then this is perfect with the baby's breath, because that just adds that delicate beauty to the single long stem rose that goes in this bud vase. Yep. And I believe this one's also 17. So, there you go. That gives you some ideas of the different kind of containers. I, you know, going back to the picture, I love using pictures um, of all kinds. I love using teapots, and again, the same rule when you're measuring a teapot, most of them tend to be about five inches high, maybe six, but then you're taking into account the spout and the handle, which is probably nine inches, so nine plus five is 14, so from the bottom to the top would be about 14 inches. That, yeah, that's probably a good height for a centerpiece, much like this one. But um, it wouldn't be as large right. as this. So, okay, I think yeah. that's it. Sounds good. Okay, so <coughs> someone asked uh, you, how did you decide to start a tea shop? Oh my. And so you can answer that 
while we move to the kitchen. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're moving to the tea portion of our evening, and I'll let mom talk okay. while we move in here. Well, and set up. just a clarification I never had a tea shop. Well, that's true. I don't even have a tea shop. No, um, a tea business. But um, I'm going to give you the short answer to that because it was kind of one of those things where I, I kind of worked my way into recognizing that that's what I needed to do. And it was a woman who told me because I had been teaching some cooking classes, she thought I could do the same thing with tea. So I started having workshops where I was teaching women and some men who came through the house and we had workshops and we did them for, I think, four or five years every fall. And I was able to build up a customer base and a loyalty with these folks, and they wanted to know where they could get good tea, good quality tea. So I went to um, a gift show down in Atlanta, opened up an account with a tea company, one company at the time, at that time, and started in my kitchen packaging tea and started selling tea, and it kind of grew from there. I moved into um, a larger space in the house, uh, started online sales, and then started the Etsy shop as well, and then started having open houses and having more people come in and getting familiar with the business, started on Facebook, and it just kind of exploded. Mm -hmm. And it was 22 years until I handed it over to Jen, yep. and now she is the owner of the tea shop, the tea shop which is only online. Yes. Don't, I don't have, uh, I mean, the world headquarters of Tea for All Reasons is in my house, uh, but no one's coming to shop in my house, so um, it's all online. I have no plans on opening brick and mortar, tea shop, tea room, anything like that. Um, I'm going to continue exclusively online, so, yeah. It was, it was great doing it that way, Yeah. you know, and doing what we're doing now, I mean, I retired and didn't think that I would still be involved in uh, in the business at all. But this, we're actually. But I roped you in. <laughs> you did, and we're coming up on our second anniversary of, of open of, of um, doing Facebook, Facebook Live. Lives. Yeah, thanks to COVID. Gone. Thanks to COVID. Yeah. COVID forced us. Forced us because we wouldn't, we couldn't do the open houses, and so I was trying to think, okay, how can we get the word out? And so here we are, Facebook Live, and. I, that's not going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So here's the tea demo portion for those of you who've been waiting for that, and thank you for waiting. Um, but I, I hope that you guys can, will take something away from the floral arranging, even if it's just how to do a pretty vase mm -hmm. of a few simple flowers. Um, so thanks. You're welcome. That's great. Okay, so don't forget the giveaway, which is the mug and the one ounce bag of Bennett Sisters that I took over there, and so it's not handy, but the giveaway tonight is a pretty mug with a magnolia motif. It's on the step, and a one ounce bag. No, no, no. No, no, it's fine. And a I'll... one ounce bag of Bennett Sisters, which is one of the teas that I'm going to show you and demo tonight. Um, and I chose five teas to show you guys tonight. The five teas are um, have florals in them, um, and so I am gonna brew all five. Uh, here's the mug, pretty magnolia tea mug, and then the bag of one ounce of Bennett Sisters. This is the giveaway, and the key phrase is mug tea. And if you've already done it, you don't need to do it, but in the comments, put mug tea. And tomorrow, as I always do with Miss Molly, we will draw a name out of the <coughs> Tea for All Reasons mug and um, announce that giveaway. Okay, so we're going to steep three of them in pots, and then I'm also going to demonstrate the tea sack, because I feel like if I show you the tea sack, then they make sense. So we are going to show the tea sack. So I'm going to start with showing you the teas. I have three black teas, one green tea, and one rooibos tea. And so I'll show you Bennett Sisters first. This is from the Jane Austen collection. It's a basic black tea with um, rose petals. And it, you know what? They're in there. <laughs> but there are not a lot of rose petals in this one, actually. Um, and so 
uh, if you don't I like flowers, bet they went to the bottom. They probably the did go to the bottom, and I don't want to be digging around in there. But they are in there. Trust me. There's a little one. Um, rose petals, but it's a it's a peach and roses flavor, and you can smell the peach. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a really nice peach tea um, with a faint hint of rose. So if you're like me and you're not so much for the florals in your tea, um, this is a nice one. Um, and so we're going to brew this. Okay, so perfect cup of teaspoon available in the shop. And I'm, we're only going to brew one cup. So I'm going to add a heaping. I'm going to do a heaping just so we have a little bit extra. You're doing it in the pot? Yeah, in okay. the pot. All so right. I'm going to do... That you know what I'm I'm gonna do two. Yeah, I'll do two. But one of these spoons does one cup of tea. But we're gonna do two to make sure we have enough. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's Bennett Sisters, and this is the one that is the giveaway tea. And so we're gonna steep that. I got it. I got it. Three minutes. Black tea. Three minutes. Timer. Start. Okay. Then the next one is hibiscus cream, and it is exactly how it sounds. It's a basic black tea that has a cream, creamy flavor to it. It's nice, it has a nice warm cream flavor. And hibiscus, it does have actual hibiscus petals in there. And so we're going to steep this one in a pot as well. And so two spoons in there, and that's hibiscus cream. I, I really like this one a lot. And it's gonna, it should end up with a little bit of a pink hue. It is a black tea, and so the pink might not be as obvious as it would be in a green tea, um, but it should be a little bit pink. I'm gonna just say one thing. Um, we don't always do it, but yep. it's really a good idea to stir the tea once you've added the water and always put the lids on because yep. you want to keep the steam in there yep. keep the heat and the steam in there yep okay yep okay all right and then the third black tea is French lavender rose and um, black tea you can see the lavender in there and it has rose petals this is actually the base tea is Earl Grey um, in this one, so it is also going to have the flavor of the bergamot in it. But um, it, I love blending this one. Which one is that? Oh, French, French lavender, lavender rose. Because yes. um, mm -hmm. the lavender, if you like lavender, <sighs> so you good. have to be careful with lavender in tea, otherwise it's going to taste like soap. Yeah. Um, and so. Um, but this one. But this is a. It's a nice tea. I I love the lavender. Yeah, right. um, and someone, it was. Uh, I think as I was answer or stating this about putting a cover on someone had asked when steeping does it make a difference if the cup or pot is covered yes <laughs> yep put that lid on there okay go ahead and pour that water in and then when the timer goes off i'll set it for two you got it okay so we have about 45 seconds left on the first tea so we'll hold off on doing the green and the rooibos until after these are done steeping. My nose itches. Um, I think I'm allergic to rose, actually. When I'm, when I'm blend, yeah, when I'm blending with a lot of rose petals, it mm -hmm. makes my nose itch. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so when we pour these, I'll show these while we're waiting 20 seconds. This is a uh, uh, strainer. It has a nice handle with the teapot, and I do sell these in the, in the shop the online shop and then this is the Empress and this one comes with the cup um, so that when you're done steeping you can put it or uh, done pouring you can put it in the thing so we're going to use that to strain uh, yeah so this Bennett's. is Bennett Sisters mm -hmm. and so we'll pour this into our beautiful cup so that strainer catches those tea leaves and there you go Bennett Sisters. I'll put that right in there for now. And then we'll wait a couple more seconds for uh, this one to finish. Yeah, but that is that for this one? Okay, so we don't have a timer for that one. I'll put a minute on that one. <laughs> oh, you got that too? Okay, all right. Cancel. Okay, good. Okay. 
so now we're going to pour, this is the hibiscus cream. Oh, I don't see the pink. As much. Nope. And so that's the hibiscus cream. And I, I drink this um, frequently. Mm -hmm. It's um, healthy too. It's it's just a nice basic black tea mm -hmm. with that little bit of hint of hibiscus mm -hmm. in it. And then, you know, I'm just rinse this real quick. Okay, and then we'll use that one for the French lavender rose. I it went away. 44 seconds. Okay, well, while we're waiting for that, I'll show this while we're waiting. Okay, so the tea sack. So I'm going to demonstrate the tea sacks. This is tea sack number one, and you can see it's pretty small. I also have a tea sack number two and a three. The three is good for a pot. The two I like for a mug because um, you can fit more tea in there. And so I don't know if you saw, they come out of the box two kind of sealed together, and if you find the bottom, of one, then you can find the beginning of the other and just pull them apart. Um, and I kind of did that fast. So while we're waiting on that timer, find the opening of your tea sack. And so this is how I load a tea sack. Oh, wait, hold on. Are we done? Okay, then we'll come back to that. Okay, so this is the French lavender rose black tea. So we have three blacks. Three black. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Three black teas this time. And then I'm going to demonstrate the. And that one looks a little lighter a than little the other two. A little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. But definitely black teas. Yeah, it's just black tea. So this mm -hmm. is French lavender rose. This one's the hibiscus cream. And then that one is the Bennett Sisters. Right. And then the other two that I'm going to show you, the green one is um, Vanilla Orange Jasmine. And it's a really nice uh, green tea um, with um, jasmine flowers and orange peel. It has a little bit of lemon peel, cloves, um, apple bits, cinnamon. It's a, it's a, a nice green tea. Um, with that little hint of the jasmine in it. Yeah. Um, I, um, and it does say it has a little bit of black tea. Yeah, too. that one, I'll give you the story behind that one. I had a customer who had been to the Drake Hotel in Chicago and loved their orange jasmine tea. And she came to me, she was a regular customer, and she said, can you make something in the, um, the orange jas to, you know, uh, duplicate the orange jasmine from the Drake Hotel. And I experimented, and I don't even remember if I gave her any samples, but this is what I came up with, and she said it was perfect. Well, there you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, so uh, in the tea sack, I'm going to demonstrate this one, and so I'm going to take one spoon, and I, my tea sack is open, ready to go, and I've got my spoon, and I always put the bowl in like this, and then once it's in, I turn it to unload and then let the tea go down. And so I am going to add a little bit more. We're going to brew this right into the cup, and I always want to make sure I have enough tea um, in the cup. And so then I fold it over, and using a tea clip, I'm going to attach this tea clip. No, there's no question. And stick this in the cup. Now normally you would not do a tea sack. Yeah, go ahead. I would not do a tea sack in a teacup like this. Um, yeah, you would do a mug. You would do it in a mug, but yeah. we're, I'm just doing a demo. So, And I'm just going to pour this right over that to shock the tea. And then two minutes, two minutes only, I got it, for green tea. Um, I've got a timer. So don't do more than two minutes on your green tea or it's going to get bitter. And we talk about this every time. Bitter green tea is the worst. You can tolerate bitter black tea 
but green tea, if it if it oversteeps, yeah. you just dump it. It's not even worth trying to drink it. It is so not good. And that's oh, that's an hour. That's right. That's why it's um, really good to do it in a tea sack because then you can remove the leaves. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in your pot. Yeah, um, and, and your mug. Um, right. And then um, and then your uh, then your tea's good to go. Okay, and then the last one is the rooibos, and this is Manor House Rose, and you can see the rose petals in there. It's also got sunflower petals, um, but this is raspberry, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, raspberry rooibos, and um, it's really good. I mm -hmm, like it a lot mm -hmm. um, with the rose petals in there. Good and iced, too. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, that, it's that a nice. Jasmine, that orange jasmine is good iced. Well, pretty much all of pretty them. Pretty much all are of them. Good. Yeah, the, yeah, the Bennett sisters. Yeah. I know. I'm not. I'm not done with iced tea yet. Yeah. So the vanilla orange jasmine does have a little bit of black tea in there, so it's not going to be light um, like your typical green tea because it does have some black tea in the blend. Um, so, like at first, I was alarmed that it was dark, but. You still only want to give it two minutes, right? Because that green tea, even though it's got some black tea in there, it's not gonna. It'll, yeah. it'll be bitter, right? Um, and some, you know, it's inter It was always confusing to me because some descriptions of jasmine were that they that it was oolong, mm. and I never could get a definitive answer whether it was green or oolong. Well, I think it's green. Yeah. I mean, the jasmine is the flower, not the tea. No, I know. Yeah. I know, but yeah. Well, this is green. Well, no, no. Like the my jasmine, variety is the green. jasmine's the tea. The jasmine sometimes has jasmine flowers in it. Yeah, well, this has jasmine flowers in it. Right. So, okay. So, all right. So, the timer went off on that. So, I'm going to I sell this tea, tea bag, bag squeezer. I'm going to squeeze this tea bag. Off. I'm going to squeeze this tea bag, get every little drop out. There we go. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Keep that. Yeah. Clip. There we go. And so there is your vanilla orange jasmine. Does the temperature of the water matter? Yeah, the temperature of the water does matter. And we, when we're doing demos, we tend to use the same kettle every time but yes the there are some teas prefer um, not boiling um, black tea boiling water uh, rooibos tea boiling water green tea wants o oolong green tea and white tea just short, just short of um, of boiling um, which means you have to look at the water to see um, what you want is the bubbles to look like um, fish eggs just, just so you're starting to get a little bit of a bubble underneath the, the surface. It's not a yeah. boiling. If, if boil. you can look at your if water, you can look or at the water. you can get a kettle. That, there are tea kettles out there that have different temperature settings. I yeah. got one for my birthday, yeah. and we use the different temperature settings it has for green tea, oolong, French press, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. black, so um, white tea. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think green tea is 195 Fahrenheit. I think um, white tea is 175. I think oolong is close to that too. Yeah. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're going to get a better quality pot or cup of tea if you do pay attention to the water. I'm lazy, and so I tend to just boil it. Um, well, and the, until I got my kettle with the different yeah. temperature settings. But the so. the important thing to remember, especially with black tea, is that the water should come to a rolling boil, and that's why a microwave, just setting it for two minutes or whatever, you're going to get hot water, but it's you're not, not going to get boiling water. Yeah, you need boiling, and don't don't boil it in the microwave anyway. Yeah. Um, Boiling water shocks the leaves. Yep. They need to be shocked into releasing their, their um, um, what is it, liquor. Is yeah, what the, the liquor. The liquor. Well, the liquor is the end product. So. The green tea and the white tea can't handle the shock of the boiling water. Right. They right. Can't, they're too delicate. So that's why you do not bring that to a 
boil. boil. Right. Yep. Okay, so I while she was talking, I went ahead and loaded the tea sack with the rooibos, the manor house rose, and poured the water on it, and that is steeping. How much time did you give it? Two? No, that needs more like four minutes, so he'll do his two minutes, and then we'll do another two. <laughs> um, any other questions while we're waiting? Because four minutes is actually a really long time. Somebody asked if you would get boiling water by running it through a curing type device. No. Mm -mm. no. I don't recommend doing tea through a Keurig because, um, because the tea's not in the water long enough. Um, I know that the, the Keurig has pods for tea. Like, you can get tea pods, but that tea is probably powder. Yeah. Um, so that you you know you're gonna get a darker tea um, tea from that much like what you're getting in a tea bag like commercial tea bags like right. Lipton or Red Rose or any right. of those. It's the fannings um, it's, that are left over it's, from or or they've ground it or they on it. purpose to be in those pods because um, that's the only way that you're gonna get a cup of tea right through the Keurig. The if it's full leaf for one thing those pods aren't gonna hold enough tea. Um, yeah, it, loose I've, leaf tea. So I don't never, recommend doing a Keurig. No. I don't think it actually brings it up to a boil. I, I mean, like you it. get pretty hot coffee out of the Keurig, but <laughs> but not boiling. I don't think it's boiling. No. I don't like that there's oil from the coffee in the process. And yeah, and that's, that's true. true. That yeah. too. There. Yeah. Um, something else I wanted to say, if I can uh, recall. Um, oh, if you were, uh, remember, I think it was last. Facebook Live we had, some of you were asking about cold brew tea. Well, I decided to get some and try it. And, uh, and I, to be honest with you, I bought it and brewed it to put in my smoothie. So it wasn't like I was going to drink a whole glass of iced tea of this cold brew. But, and I bought a good quality cold brew. Um, was designed for cold brew. And to be honest with you, I did not like it. I did not, you know, I bought a peach flavor. I just didn't think it was very good. It um, didn't brew uh, well. You know, I, I did the prescribed time and um, it didn't get a really good hearty brew out mm -hmm. of it. Um, yeah, I think it's weak. It's very weak. I just didn't like it at all. Yeah. So I don't. I don't recommend it. I mean, I'm yeah. going to use up the box in my smoothies, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to make make it for, for iced tea. tea. Yeah. No. So the question was, can you use the Keurig to get boiling water to use for your tea? You can get hot water. You can get hot water. I don't think it's going to be it's boiling. It's not boiling. No. I don't think it'll so, be hot enough. Maybe for green. Yeah, maybe or, for green white, or white tea, but um, not for black. Yeah, I don't think it would be strong, uh, hot enough no, for black, or even rooibos. Rooibos needs the boiling water, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, um, but like I said, I'm not a stickler on the, um, on the water temperatures. It could, so. it could maybe work for herbals. Yeah, like if you're where traveling, it's maybe you're traveling and you are looking for some herbal tea and... You want to do it that way? You know, herbals would be fine. Yeah, I mean, if that's the only way you're going to get hot water, then, yeah, use it. It's like when I go on travel and I'm using the hot water in the hotel. I guarantee you that water is no longer boiling temperature. Right. But I'm still going to get a pretty, you know, passable cup of tea in, yeah. my, in my thermos. We're not. In my thermal we're mug. Not, like, religious it, yeah about I'm, it. I'm not a snob about no we're not water. a snob but we're just you know you've asked the questions and yep. so we're trying to answer uh the best way that we can and um, um yep then you you know you do what works best for you we're giving you what the right answer is yeah it doesn't mean that we always ascribe to the right answer right. We're so not, we're not tea snobs we're not snobs no. Do do whatever you need to do. Okay, Unless I so have I'm a bad cold brew. Right. Yeah, I'm not a fan <laughs> of cold brew either. So okay, so this is the rooibos, and I can smell that raspberry. Yeah. Um, and so I just dumped that tea sack in the trash, and here's a little tea clip. And I do sell these tea clips, all different colors, um, I love in mine. my shop. 
and um, so you can get those. I'll order more. I usually. So the last couple of years, I've ordered them after the holidays. Mm. Um, I, I only order them once a year. Okay. They're handmade by a woman in Canada, and um, so it's just easier for me Give and her. Gifts. I just do for you know like sake stubbers. Yeah, exactly. All right, let me see. What tea in the shop would come close to a? Is this Mandarin? Mandarin yes. orange spice. Orange spice oh. flavor. Well, oranges, oranges and, and spice. spice. Oranges, Funny. Is it, yeah, oranges, oranges and spice. It's oranges and spice, yeah. which is one of the holiday blends. And so it may not actually be listed in the shop right now. Because after the holidays, I took out of the shop most of the seasonal um, <coughs> blends. Because I don't, I don't stock them year-round. So probably in the next month, six weeks, um, the fall teas will be listed. And some of the more fallish holiday teas. But yeah, oranges, oranges and, spice and spice would be one that gives you that orange and spice flavor. Orange and mandarin orange. Yeah. Um, another one, and it's not spicy, but um, Hawaiian Sunset is oh, a blood orange. That one's so good. It is a good one, right? And that's an herbal. It's a, no. Mm, oh yeah, it is it herbal. Is, it's yeah. rooibos. It's a rooibos uh, blend. Um, it's got a lot of fruit in it. But um, yeah, Hawaiian Hawaiian Sunset is blood orange, but it doesn't have that spice. Right. If you're looking for the spice to go with the orange, yeah, you've um, gotta wait till fall. You have to wait until the fall. Okay, so we can talk about that. Yes. Yes. So, and I don't. We don't time. have any notes tonight. So. Oh. Oh let's, yeah. We can move over. We'll move back over to our usual spot. Into our um, flowers. And the beautiful, beautiful flowers. Um. Yeah, so we want to talk about next month. Yeah, so next month, and I got, I didn't, I usually have a little script, but because this was mom's show, I didn't write the script for today, so I have, I have no script. Um, I had no script. Oh, this is what we've got planned for next month. No. Really? I think so. Okay, well that's fine with yeah. me, it's all you. Okay, so <laughs> next month, our Facebook Live is going to be on September 17th at 7 p.m. like normal um, and it will be a preview to fall um, preview I mean it's gonna be fall, fall the fall teas and a baking demo done by yeah, I'm so doing it's the all baking. her it's gonna next be all month. me <laughs> um, yeah that won't be a little that'll be a little much but um, but we're mapping out through the holidays of what we're doing um, and so October we have a baking demo planned. November will be our virtual open house mm -hmm. and then we will do a Facebook live in December and that will be um, something Christmassy. Something Christmassy. Uh, we'll probably do a baking demo we'll for have, that one. We'll probably have to do it early enough. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It'll need to be early. Maybe I've got middle it. of the month? Mm, I think the 10th is what I've got but we were going to talk. It's two weeks before Christmas. Yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> tentative, tentative date. Depends on whether I'm done decorating at that point. Oh, okay. you'll be done, please. Well, <laughs> just this part needs to be done. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, we'll hash that out. But I, the target is December 10th because that's two weeks before Christmas. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll try. It's two weeks after Thanksgiving. <laughs> it may be all you, hon. It, uh, okay, <laughs> mini. We'll do one mini at my house. Um, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, you know, whatever okay. we do here, you'll do the baking. Well, but we are going to be showing you some new recipes because yes. the cookbook is basically sold out. I know. I Thank have, you all for yeah. the the buyers because I'm I'm out. She's totally. out. I have three. Oh wow! I'm down to three cookbooks, and so if you want one now, you, like this is it. Yeah. There are no more. They're not going to print again. Excuse me. This is it. But we are working on a new cookbook. It'll be years. It's, it's, it's up gonna, here. It's in our heads, and we've talked about some ideas. <laughs> we even talked today, and yeah. so some of the recipes that we're going to be previewing are ideas that the we ideas have for the new cookbook. That we cookbook. have for the new cookbook. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we're going to test out some things on y'all, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's what's coming probably next year we will start doing some recipes um, with with the idea that they're for the new cookbook. Mm -hmm. 
that honestly, the new cookbook is going to be a couple years away, probably. Because we unless gotta, we can get someone to do a lot of the work for us, we'll come up with the ideas we'll, and let someone yeah, do the work. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But um, yeah, because we have to figure out how to publish this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, just to let you know, we are working on a new cookbook potentially, and we've got recipes that we're working on, and, and it'll be more than just tea, I think. Yeah, we've got a lot of family recipes we, that we decided we want to um, pass along, and mm -hmm. this is a great way to do it, so yeah. we're, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress right now, just in our heads. Yep. It's going to take a while for us to really um, come down with a, a good plan, but, yep. but we have decided we're going to add some family recipes, so yep. it will be... Some, some dinners. <clears throat> yeah. Some desserts, some yeah. tea stuff. Yeah, we'll have like um, a tea so section. There will be, yeah, yeah, so there will be stuff for tea, yes. Right. Cookies. Cookies. Cookies, of course. Yes. Cookies, desserts, you name, appetizers, yeah. you know, starters, all kinds of right. stuff. Yeah, but we have a that, lot of family recipes. Um, yep. So. Yep. Anyway, so the next Facebook Live is on September 17th, and um, baking demo and fall teas. Yep. Okay. And um, and then October, I th yeah, we're not we're, sure on we're the date. still trying to figure out the date on the yeah. October one. I think you published it, but we're not. I sure haven't yet. published it yet. Okay, all right. Um, but I was looking at that date. Yeah, that was the one in question. So. Yeah, so because um, we got things happening in October, so we'll we'll figure it out. And so once we know the October date, I will publish the event in Facebook and announce it, and you guys will see it. The uh, virtual open house in November is the twelfth. Yeah, I, that's pretty set. We've yeah, done we that every, every veterans, every year. Veterans, veterans Day every, weekend. Yeah, Veterans Weekend. So that'll yeah. be November twelfth. So you can mark your calendar, November twelfth, virtual open house, right. and um, and then that's it. So okay. the giveaway. Don't forget mug tea for the magnolia mug and the yeah Bennett sisters one. And ounce. check out Jen's shop teaforallreasons.com check out my shop at um, at Etsy um, vintage for all vintage reasons. for all reasons and um, for you know all the things that you saw tonight mm -hmm. are in in either one of the shops yep either one or the other shops yep and the teas and the teas and the teas yeah and um, we'll talk about it next month but uh, preparing for the holidays uh, I've done some polling in the group oh the group if you want to be part of the Tea for All Reasons group, and it's 9 o'clock, um, then um, please join us in the group. You get insider info, and I post there every day. Mom manages the page where you're watching this live, and um, so she handles that, and I've got the group. I do, uh, you have to answer a couple questions. Um, if you, if you're Facebook account doesn't have a profile photo or is relatively new, you're going to get automatically rejected. So shoot me a message to let me know that you're trying to get in the group and I'll work with you individually to get you into the group. But um, that's facebook.com slash groups slash T for all reasons. And um, our cover is the logo and right. you'll see that. Right. But please join us in the group. And I think that's it. I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Hubby, for helping us yep. tonight. Thank and, you so uh, much. Thank you all for joining us. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful flowers. flowers. And uh, I want to see, you know, if you all decide to do something like this, be sure and post pictures. I want to see. Yeah, post pictures in the group. In the group. If yeah. you're in the group. Um, you can post on the page. So yeah. you can post on the page. They don't always show up because Facebook is weird how yeah. pages are. But they'll show up in the group. But if you're in the group and you've done flower arranging, please post yeah. your photos. I want to see what we you've learned. See. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, folks. Okay. Thank you. Well, we'll see you in a month. Good night. Good night. <laughs>